Hello! It's Monday in real life. I don't know when it is in your future life. What we're going to talk about today are two cooperative groupings that I like and I use and how to use them correctly. First one, um, jigsaw. It is where you're going to have a whole thing that you want students to be aware of or learn about. You're going to break apart pieces for each person or each group to different do a different piece to put it back so everybody has a whole learning experience. Here's how I used it. Eighth grade, studying science and studying energy. So we had six kind of energies we were gonna study. Geothermal, wind, solar, fossil fuel, natural gas, and, okay, nuclear. So everybody ranked one through six, the order at which they'd be most interested in learning and researching that type of energy. I went over the weekend, made cooperative groups that would work socially and academically. I thought they'd be successful. Tried to give them what they wanted to the best of my ability. And each group researched an area. So my mini lessons for the research would teach them how to write a bibliography. Group A, they would each have a, bo a book about nuclear energy and they would write the bibliography for that book. Everybody's writing bibliography, but they're on different topics, they're on different books so that we had enough that there were books in the library. Then I would teach how to take notes, how to write a paragraph, they would work on it as a group, and then everybody did a presentation. So everybody learned the writing of research writing, bibliography, and reporting out. Everybody got a nice presentation on the six types of energy, checked off a lot of objectives on my thing, and it worked really well. That's a jigsaw. Jigsaw is not tearing apart four, di four different paragraphs of one paper, have people read it and report out. No. If they didn't like the paragraph they read, they're not gonna listen to the other speakers. If they like the paragraph they read, they're gonna read the other one anyway. So don't just tear apart an article because it's too long, you think they won't finish it. That's not a jigsaw. What I explained is a jigsaw. Second one that I really like, and this is what I use when we need consensus in the classroom. So it doesn't matter what the consensus is about, a scenario that I used it in is every time we had to make a, t think of a title for a class book. So we had all written food poems and we were going to create a book and we were going to put it in the um, district author's fair. We needed a title. So everybody on their own would get about two minutes to brainstorm titles they like. Then that one person would snowball into two people. The two people would get together, read their lists and come up with three or four that they both agreed on could be possible book titles. Those two people then snowballed into four people. They would get together, read their two lists again, and come back with one list of three or four things, then the group of four, and it would snowball out until you have the whole class with three or four titles that they approve of. I get one veto, students in the room then could advocate for the one they preferred or advocate why one should be crossed off, then you do a vote and that's the title. It gives multiple opportunities. If there was a title in there that a student was really uncomfortable with and really didn't like, it would be off the list before it made it to the board. So that's cooperative learning, two strategies, use them every day. Um, kindergarten through high school, adult school, I used them in my credential classes. They work, you'll love them, try them. Comment if you need help. Stop by Periscope for the Kim for the kids if you wanna chit chat about it. Bye.